Hey everyone, this is Chris Riddell. It's Monday morning, means it's time for Motivational Monday, and I'm here with my friend Kyle Peters, the pastor of Crossway Vineyard and local Urbana resident and um, recent traveler of the world. That's right. Yeah. So you um, just got back from the UK, mm -hmm. and you spent how many days there? Uh, I was gone for 16, uh, but it was probably it was two weeks, really, 14 right. days of being there. Okay. And um, this trip, was it uh, just just out of the blue, planned for fun, or what, what happened? How did you end up in the UK? It, it was a little bit out of the blue. Um, <clears throat> so a friend of mine, Putty Putman is his name, he's a kind of a leader, leader in the vineyard. Um, he was asked to come to the UK um, and just do some training of okay. uh, local churches, <clears throat> and um, it's had to because of the pandemic. Uh, it's been canceled several times, and okay. and his team that he had uh, created kind of did, they didn't the new date didn't work out, uh, and so he was scrambling like a month and a half before the trip and asked me, and I was I was all about it. That's um, awesome. So, yeah, that's how it came. Yeah, so um, the UK, have you been there before? No, this is my first time in Europe at all. Okay. Yeah. So what were your impressions as you as you stepped across the pond? Yeah, so to be honest, uh, UK has not been like on the top of my list. <laughs> uh, although Ireland, I would love to go to Ireland, but I didn't, I didn't get to. You were close. I was, I was. I looked across, uh, but... Uh, no, actually, I really loved it. Um, awesome. It was really beautiful. Everything is like in the city, especially in London. Everything is packed in so tight. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, I wasn't super excited about that, but I actually did some repenting about that because there's just something beautiful about like um, there's a there's a, a closeness mm. that the community um, in terms of the church yeah. that they have that was really actually really beautiful so it's almost like a physical proximity kind of translates into more of a emotional like literally stuff. small space yeah. that they're being packed into mm -hmm. and so they're having to be right. you know in the elevator in the yeah. car in in the building yeah. uh you're just closer and mm -hmm. i think it uh there's just more of like a connectedness yeah, we tend in America to like to spread out. We value our space. <laughs> yes. Do. Yeah. Like, give us, give me forty acres and like, yeah, this little house on here, and I'll see you if I see you. Even our roads, yeah. like, we want our roads to be really big. In yeah. London, they're like they're so small. It's yeah, crazy watching everything. them drive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, in any experiences jump out at you that that um, that were uh, uh, intriguing to you or um, that you caught yourself saying, what in the world is going on here? Or, oh, it's life's different there. Yeah. Um, interesting. Just like in terms of culture. Yeah. Um, well, definitely watching people drive. Um, also, whenever, like, anything tourist related, it seemed like any tour guide was only talking about dead bodies. <laughs> like, this famous person is buried over there, and this person was decapitated over there. Oh, and, man. Uh, so that was kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, um, also, you know, just like how old everything is yeah. was really interesting that like our country is actually incredibly young. Yes. I actually talked to a, a, like a royal guard at the Tower of mm -hmm. London um, and uh, he was kind of like teasing us Americans and he said, you know, I have socks that are older than your country. <laughs> <laughs> Met 200 and some plus years, right? Yeah, right. That's funny. Yeah. So you have a funny story you wanted to share. Oh, uh, yes. And feel free to edit this out if yeah. you want. But uh, so, okay. So every place, every place where we were doing ministry, I think it was like 28 different like speaking and ministry occasions oh, in wow. 14 days. So it was 28 trainings essentially. Yep. In 14 days. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. And uh, most of them included like ministry time where we're just praying for people mm -hmm. and people are encountering the presence of God in mm -hmm. some really significant ways. And so in this one particular place, this is early on in Birmingham, they don't say Birmingham. Yeah. Uh, um, we like to add um. food into our <laughs> language anywhere we can. Uh, but I'm praying for this lady and uh, just the peace of God is really resting on her. And so she's just getting more and more like relaxed mm -hmm. and eventually starts to fall over, which might be weird to mm -hmm. people. Uh, so I'm like 
like as it's happening, oh, oh, I need to help her down to the floor. And so I'm kind of like, you know, like holding her back and lowering her to the floor and I'm going down in squat position as yeah. I do it. Uh, well, as it happens kind of quickly and all of a sudden you hear a big rip and it's the crotch of my pants. Good. Or as they say, trousers. Trousers, uh, yeah. Pants is the word for underwear. Oh, there. okay. So that's good to know. Yeah, but you ripped your trousers. Not your I pants. ripped my trousers and like a very large section of my trousers right in the crotch. And so I'm I'm kneeling down on the ground. This lady is oblivious to yeah. the giant hole in my pants right next to her head, yeah. fortunately. But uh, I'm, I'm like trying to pray for her and like, yeah. just bless what God you're doing with her right now. But also in my head, I'm like, God, what am I going to do? Right. There's a room full of people behind me, <laughs> and I don't know how far back on my pants this rip goes. Right. Uh, but I'm just kind of just trying to be present at the moment and not panic. And uh, eventually, a couple minutes later, which feels like an eternity, well, this, yeah. this other lady comes over. I don't think anybody knows at this point what's happening with my pants, trousers. <laughs> um, so she comes over and, and starts praying for this lady. And I use that as an opportunity uh, to excuse myself. Uh -huh. My coat is just a couple seats behind, so I walk backwards to my coat. Uh, <laughs> Putty, who is the leader of this event, is looking at me like, where are you going? And I'm like, my pants! I'm a oh, no. And he's like, okay, go take care yeah. of it. So I grab my coat and I, I hold it in front of myself, and our hotel is about a mile away. Oh, that's a good bit. So it, through downtown Birmingham. So yeah. I, I walk through downtown Actually, a section of t town that I had walked through is called Gay Village. All right. Um, and so I just held my coat in yeah. front of me and smiled and walked to my hotel room. So, <laughs> Golly. Have you ripped your pants before? <sighs> That's Yes, actually, I could tell you a number of such stories. Is this a common thing for you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, that is, that is, I have also experienced this. It is... An exciting time to be alive when you are absolutely living yeah. in real vulnerability. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. All right. So twenty-eight trainings in fourteen days. What was the heart of these trainings? What was um, the focus? Um, yeah. What, what was your your passions that you saw that um, that came out of these with, with the local church and yeah. England, which yes. is still our local church because we're all connected. <laughs> yes, and uh, they are facing a lot of the same things that we're facing, and so a lot of churches, like a lot of people, have walked away, mm -hmm. you know, and also like they've been dealing with pandemic, and mm -hmm. actually a lot of them have had it a lot more intensely than mm -hmm. us in terms of they live in such close proximity, right. um, and also like the you know the rules, mm -hmm. government rules, all of that. They're just over in the UK, a lot of places, they're just now, yeah. like, mask mandates are yeah, dropping. I just saw that this week was, like, the last one. Like, they're even doing it for airplanes now, which is in England. Oh, really? In England, yeah. Oh, wow. Just saw it this week. So they're starting to lift things just now. Yes, and so it was kind of cool, the timing of it. Like, we got to kind of be catalytic and just, like, brushing off the pandemic dust mm -hmm. off of the church in the UK. Yeah. And, like, inviting them back into the mission of God. It seems like that timing wasn't accidental. Yeah, 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 right, yeah. I'm really thankful the timing of it was interesting. Yeah. Um, but in terms of, like, your question yeah. of the heart of it, um, we really focused on the kingdom of God. Mm. And when I say kingdom, like, I know, I know your church has, you've talked about kingdom. Mm -hmm. I'll just say simply that I've learned, and this has become, like, a really core thing for me, that um, the gospel of Jesus is not simply the gospel of salvation. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, that's great, wonderful. But it's so much more that yeah. the gospel is, you know, Jesus calls it the gospel of the kingdom, Yeah. you know? And when we say kingdom, we're talking about the reign of God. Mm -hmm. We're talking about God Just being king reign. again, as was originally intended from the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. And not only God being king, but like he created humanity to rule and reign with him, to yeah. partner with him in, in ruling over all of creation. Co-create. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's just like, I always think of the Lion King, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, Mufasa is such a good king mm -hmm. that the land experiences life and blessing, mm -hmm. you know, that when God gets his way, like we experience peace, we experience yeah. joy and like 
abundance, mm-hmm. you know, abundant life yeah. and like supernatural provision and yeah. healing and all yeah. those good things. So anyway, that's that's kind of the heart of it is, um, oh man, we're, we're called as a church to steward this thing called yeah. the kingdom of God. And let's learn how to recognize where like the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. is moving and bringing the rule of God so that we can partner with bringing that about. And I think a good... It always helps me to kind of look at the contrast to that. Yeah. The opposite, right? Yeah. I mean, because I think we've, we've, you know, even we talk about America, it's like our space, and we, you know, we like our thing. Yeah. We like our thing. Yes. Right? And I think if we talk we about... We like to have our way. Yeah. Yeah. And our kingdom, right? Yeah. And I think that's <clears throat> what you're talking about. If we're not reminded of that, that our churches, our communities, our families can become as like a personal kingdom of our own... Yeah. And not connected to the the broadness of God's entire rule and reign, which is yeah. beyond just what we are experiencing. Yeah. There's more to it than just what we see. Yeah. And experience. Because you're in England and you're experiencing these things. So my question is, I was like, well, if it can happen there, why can't it happen here? And if it can happen here, why can't it happen there? Right. So there's got to be, if there's a connection, it's not just about me. There's yeah. a broader sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's so what good. would you say is the trap then? that we can get sucked into um, to not experience the kingdom at hand? Yeah, that's a great question. There's so many things we could say, and I think we're kind of getting to it when we talk about us Americans. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's one obviously big trap is when we, like, we're so bent on what we desire, Mm -hmm. and we're not in line with the Father's heart. Right. Uh, We're not representing the Father. But I would also say um, that not living with a sense of anticipation mm. that just when just as when Jesus was saying the kingdom of God is at hand mm-hmm. and as he's saying it he's bringing the reality of the rule of God yeah and um <clears throat> that's true today too that right. like through the holy spirit yeah. God is still God's reign is is always increasing it's always on the move and if we're not living with a sense of anticipation and looking for it we miss it we miss yeah. opportunities for his reign to expand in us mm-hmm. and through us. Yeah, and I would add to that. I think the it's we we think the kingdom of God is going to church on Sunday, having a cup of coffee, singing a couple songs, hearing a message, and hopefully I'll find somewhere to apply this in my life this week. Yeah, right. Or maybe I'll read my script, scriptures in the Bible a couple of times, but. The anticipation is what caught me to that. Are we yeah. doing those things with anticipation? Yeah. Or are we role playing before yeah. God? I mean, I think about Matthew 6, 6 through 8, the message version talks about, you know, don't go babbling. But the non message, don't go babbling on like the pagans do. The message version says, don't role play before God. Mm. And I think not having anticipation is a big part of that. Yeah. It, it, you're just kind of going through the motions. Yes. That's so good. You're just doing church. Yeah. As we know church. Yeah. So that's so good. Like, what if we considered it a spiritual discipline that Mm -hmm. when I am, um, when I'm with my family or when I'm in my workplace, that I would even just take a moment, take a breath and say, God, I know that you're here right now, Mm -hmm. that you're moving and that you're wanting to bring blessing and life to the people around me yeah. here in this space. Yeah. Show me where you're working. Yeah. And then looking with anticipation and expectation to see God moving. Yeah. And when you do that, then a whole new world opens up to you to be able to be a part of heaven invading earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, I, I think that shift, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm a visual person, so it's like I have to look and see around. You know, mm-hmm. we've been talking about prayer the last couple of weeks, and um, prayer is uh, I have a difficult relationship with prayer of what maybe you're thinking of like, you know, yeah, right. prayer. But for me, it's like when I'm moving and I'm walking and when I'm seeing, yeah. then my heart gets turned upside down for mm-hmm. the things around me. and. And then I can go on a rabbit trail and go, well, if, you know, I'm praying for the schools, well, that means there's a teacher in there who needs prayer. And if that means, you know, there's a kid who's experienced, you know, and you start to think of these scenarios. And then you'll, I think God will pinpoint things with you along the way to reveal what you're supposed to pray for, who you're supposed to pray for, right? Yeah. I think I hear you saying, like, 
prayer is like not meant to just be the stationary thing. Yeah. Well, at least for me, I mean, I, I know people are different personality wise, yeah. but for me, I've experienced it. And I, I, I wonder if that's for more people, but well, I think that when you think like, so we tend to close our eyes when we pray. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And I think that's good in the sense that we're trying to like not focus on the things happening around us and call our attention to right. like God, yeah. that's good. But what if we cultivate such an awareness of God mm-hmm. that instead of closing our eyes, we pray with our eyes open. Mm-hmm. And we, with that awareness of God, we're looking for where he is landing right now. Yes. Yeah. I think that's the key is because if we, if we believe that God is alive and working, then he would invite us into that, right? Yeah. I mean, he wouldn't just say, you know, I'm alive and working. Just watch me do what I'm going to do. Yeah. He would invite us to partner. Yes. Co-create. Yes. Well, that's like John 5. I love John 5. And Jesus is saying, um, my father is always working. And he says the father loves the son and shows him everything that he's doing. Yeah. And it's like this picture of like God the father is running this family business and inviting his son into the family business with him. Mm-hmm. And it's an expression of his love. Mm-hmm. And and because we are now in Christ, yeah. we're invited into the family business. Yeah. And just, the father loves you. Right. And he loves to show you what he's doing so that you can be a part of like working alongside of him. Yeah. And I think that's good because... We're going to experience heartache, challenges, <laughs> disappointments yeah. along the way. And we all, all of our families and situations are different and dynamic. Um, and there's probably potential that we all need some area of our life healed or right. restored or relationships mended. And so, like, if we're actively invited into God's business, yeah, we have to expect that he's going to invite us into helping those situations as well yeah right yeah i mean those those healing moments those moments of trust and restoration happening again and um where there wasn't <laughs> there yeah. now is yeah 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 that's good yeah dude so um what would you leave us with today i mean you got the <laughs> you've uh drank from a, a fire hose for 14 days uh yeah for 28 sessions i mean give us a session and you know a paragraph or less that would motivate us to to see God's kingdom. You know, what would, what would be that short-handed say takeaway for us to uh, look at the situation in front of us, or our our job where we're at today, or when we're home with our family at night? Um, what what would it be that we're being asked to do, invited into? Wow. Oh man, I <laughs> I want to preach a sermon right now. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'll I'll refrain. Um, I'll say I'll say this just very simply, mm-hmm. um, that the kingdom of God is right now in this moment at hand, mm-hmm. that it is within reach, and that if if you're willing to just learn to open your eyes mm-hmm. and look for it, look for it in your neighborhood, mm-hmm. and just ask the ask the question, whatever context you feel drawn to ask. God, show me where you're working. Yeah. You know, if you're asking that with a sincere mm-hmm. desire for God to show you, he's going to show you. Yeah. And just look with anticipation, look with expectation. And when you see it, you might start to think, well, that's just my imagination. Right. What if, what if, what would it, what, what would be the cost mm-hmm. if you took a risk and said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to step out as though that might be God mm-hmm. and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Worst case scenario, nothing happens. Right. But best case scenario, the kingdom of God comes in that yeah. moment because you stepped out. So that's what I would encourage. Yeah, I mean, I think even practically, like um, a relationship that's strained, and God places that on your heart after you ask that question. Yeah. God, where are you working? And He says, yeah. "I want to work on this relationship." Yeah. And then you have you were then invited an opportunity, right, to say, yeah. uh, reach out to that person and again the worst thing that could happen is the relationship still strained yeah right or it already was beforehand yeah but best case scenario is it's healed and restored yes. in god's kingdom reigns yes right that's a great example yeah that's awesome well i think that's a good place to end i think that is a um a spot where we could even ask ourselves that question this week uh god where are you working and then when you ask that question, probably more than once, right? I mean, because it's, yeah. you know, it, maybe you get it right away. Maybe you don't. Maybe, but continuously asking that question, God, where are you working? 
Um, and don't be surprised what you hear and, yeah. and push in a little deeper and say, okay. And then there's an opportunity to step out. Um, it could be as simple as, as texting a friend or it could be as uh, intense as praying for your neighborhood. Or I mean, you would be surprised on where God will take you. But I think yeah. at the end, when you do those things, you'll see where God was working and that he's invited you into this journey all along to be a part of it. And, and that's exciting. Yeah, because then we're we're part of the answer, not part of the problem. For one, we're adding to um, this grand work that Jesus is doing. Um, so ask that question this week. Um, comment back on here if something cool happens. We'd love to hear that and know uh, if something happened uh, when you asked that question. So uh, thanks, Kyle, for sitting down with yeah. us. I'm glad that you're back from the UK, but I'm glad you also had an experience that uh, you could share with us today so we will see you next week we love you we're praying for you uh the kingdom of god is at hand see ya